Hello everyone, welcome to our low temperature thermochronology online class. Today we will continue the chapter 4, Uranium, Cerium, Helium, Thermochronology, Analytical Techniques. I'm Lili Xu from School of Earth Science and Resources, Chang'an University. This time we will move to the second session about crystal characterization. Some basics will be introduced in this lecture today. Firstly, what is crystal characterization? It's characterizing the crystal by different techniques. For example, we can get some information on the crystal morphology and crystal size by the binocular microscope or petracular microscope, including transmitted or reflected light model. For the characteristics of internal structures of the mineral, like zonation, microinclusion, or fracture, and so on. This can be done by checking the backscattered electron image and crystal luminescence image. Take on the scanning electron microscope or electron microprobe. You may ask, why do we need to do characterization for uranium, cerium, helium dating? Let's explain it by this table. For example, the inclusions including uranium, cerium, rich mineral inclusion, and fluid inclusion will contribute parentless or excess helium, but not uranium and cerium. As a result, it will make the uranium, cerium, helium ages older than what they would be if inclusions were not present. Uranium and cerium zonation of grain will affect dating data because homogeneous uranium and cerium concentration is usually assumed. The uniform distribution will give an intermediate age. However, the rim ridge will give the youngest age, and the core ridge will give the oldest age. Overall, these effects substantially restrict what kind of crystals can be analyzed. The crystal characterization is essential for occurring true uranium, cerium, helium, age for samples. That's the reason that we need to do crystal characterization. How to do the crystal characterization for uranium, cerium, helium dating? Generally, the characteristic morphology and size of each crystal can be observed and measured by light microscope. And details about internal structures of the crystal will be investigated through scanning electron microscope or electron microprobe. These are images of one zircon grain by scanning electron microscope and light microscope respectively. Backscattered electron image is principally used to review compositional variations. In figure A, a distinct inner core, the dark gray, an outer core, and a fine scale oscillatory zoning are revealed. Cathode luminescence image by scanning electron microscope can play a useful petrographic role alongside backscattered electron images and light microscope, often revealing finer details. None of internal structure revealed by the backscattered electron and the CL images is seen in either the transmitted light image or reflected light image by light microscope. The light microscope is easy, fast, and shows the real coloring of the object. However, it isn't good enough to make very small items visible. For scanning electron microscope, it can obtain a magnified image. There are many other advantages of scanning electron microscope relative to light microscope. We will focus on the scanning electron microscope technique and introduce you the basics of scanning electron microscope and some other capabilities of it. Scanning electron microscope is a type of electron microscope that investigates the surfaces of solid samples using a focused beam of high energy electrons rather than light to form the image. For scanning electron microscope, it has a large magnification, which can be up to 500,000 times. 
it has a large depth of focus, which allows a large amount of the sample to be in focus at one time. And it produces images of high resolution with few nanometers to sub nanometers, which means that closely spaced features can be examined at high magnification. Preparation of the samples is relatively easy since most scanning electron microscopes only require the samples to be conductive. The combination of these advantages make the scanning electron microscope one of the most heavily used instruments in research areas today. For scanning electron microscope, the major components are as following. Electron gun can be thermionic scan or field emission gun, a source of the electron beam which is accelerated down to the column. Condenser lenses and objective lenses are magnetic lenses for focusing electrons to a fine beam on the specimen. Scan coils are additional magnetic field for moving beam back and forth across sample surface and for adjusting magnification here by adjusting scan area. Sample timer, where the specimen is placed and an area of beam specimen interaction that generates several types of signals. Vacuum system, all of the above electron column should be maintained at high vacuum levels. Detector and display system, that can be detect signals, for example, secondary and backscatter electrons, characteristic X-ray, and process to produce an image or spectra. How the scanning electron microscope works? A beam of electrons is generated by an electron gun. The electron beam is collimated and focused by magnetic lenses. Once the electron beam hits the surface of the specimen, some signals are ejected from the specimen. The signals are collected by detectors, then amplified, analyzed, and translated into an image or a spectra. When an electron beam strikes the surface of the specimen, a large number of signals are emitted, including both electron and photon signals. The diagram shows the signals generated by electron bombardment of a thin specimen and the techniques that use these signals. In scanning electron microscope, secondary electron backscattered electron luminescence signals and characteristic X-ray signals are mainly concerned. Both secondary electron and backscattered electron from the specimen are most commonly used for image information. Cathodoluminance signal can also be used for imaging. In addition, the characteristic X-ray enables the scanning electron microscope to be used for element mapping and analysis. For the collection of secondary electron, backscattered electron, cathodoluminescence, and uh, characteristic X-ray signals Valuable information about surface topology, morphology, and composition can be obtained by scanning electron microscope. The details about the generation of each signal will be introduced next time. That's at the end of the lecture today. Thank you for your attention. See you next time.